Hi everyone and good morning. I am Gabe Peters and I am making a video to present and promote and explain a little bit about our esports camp coming up. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks, about a month from when I'm recording this today, is our Overwatch 2 camp on, starting on July 15th. So that'll be at Red Eye Gaming Lounge, which if you don't know is a new business in Abbotsford. And Jordan there has been looking at a lot of different ways to try and bring esports and competitive esports opportunities to people in Abbotsford and we're trying to find a way to branch that to younger people here in Abbotsford who historically wouldn't have had as many opportunities as we're hoping that they will now and going forward. So that's the motivation behind this Overwatch 2 camp that we're starting. And I yeah, want to go on to explain a little bit about that and answer some questions that I've been getting. I've talked to a lot of students or potential students, I guess, for this and parents and different things. And yeah, I've been motivated to want to put something out explaining a little bit about Overwatch myself and about this camp. So we'll get started with that. First things first, I do want to explain a bit about myself as a coach and as a gamer. Um, a lot of you will know me if you're watching this. It's probably because I've actually coached your student, your child in the past at a soccer camp or led them in youth group or done all those different things. But for those of you who might not, um, a bit about me as a leader, I have done more than 10 years of volunteering with a local uh, preschool program. I have coached at soccer camp for a bunch of years, and I was playing a prominent role in a local youth program here for more than seven years, and I've just done a lot of that and hope that I can say that I'm someone who is experienced and well-versed in leadership with all different ages and, um, yeah, with a couple of different sports and different opportunities like that. So it's been really special for me to get to connect with a lot of students that way, and it's been really cool to see them growing up and learning a lot about what they like in terms of the games that they play and those kind of things. And that's something that's really special, obviously, to me as well. And so, uh, yeah, this is an opportunity that we are really excited to bring with that. But yeah, a lot of coaching and leadership experience has led me to be someone who's motivated to want to take something like this on with Jordan from Red Eye. Um, to touch briefly on myself as a gamer, I uh, obviously, if you're sending your kid to camp for a week, you want the coach to be someone who's knows what they're talking about, you know? And so I just wanted to touch a little bit on that part of things and say, yeah, that I'm someone who has played games at a high level for more than 10 years. I picked up Overwatch 2 in particular, or Overwatch 1 it was at the time, but I picked up Overwatch in 2021 and have been playing really, really avidly since then. And uh, in May 2022, I founded the UFV Esports program so that we would have a platform with which to compete at a collegiate level all across North America. And right away, our Overwatch 2 team did really well in that. And in our second semester, we already were the second ranked team in the Western Conference of all of North America. So we're in there with schools like the Oregon Ducks and USC and all these big school programs, and we're competing at a really high level with them. And then I have also founded Kelowna Gas or KG Esports, which some of you will have heard of, and which is, yeah, partnered with Red Eye to bring this camp to you and something that we're really excited about. And Kelowna Gas Esports Overwatch, with myself still as a player and as the manager and captain of all of that stuff, uh, we have now qualified this past year for Tier 1 Professional Overwatch. So we have a lot of experience in this and is something that, yeah, I'm really excited to hope to bring that kind of opportunity to students in a way that maybe it wouldn't have been available to me when I was in middle school or high school and was something that I had to kind of generate myself a couple of years ago now and something that we want to really create an ecosystem for here in the Fraser Valley. Yeah, I wanted next to do a little bit of introducing of Overwatch 2 as a game. Um, one of the big things is um, just understanding all of these different esports and all of these different games and how they all look and feel and play. And um, there is a lot of information out there, and it can be a little daunting if you just put Overwatch 2 in and you get results for how to make an account and how to sign up and all these different random theatrical trailers and cinematics and all kinds of random stuff. So. Just wanted to give a brief overview of what I think are some of the important notes about understanding Overwatch and what the gameplay is and what, uh, yeah, we're going to be trying to teach your student in July, hopefully. So Overwatch 2 is a team-based competitive game which revolves around an expansive roster of diverse characters, all with their own unique playstyle, abilities, and backstory. The strategy in Overwatch is based on individuals choosing their favorite heroes and teams picking the right composition of complementary heroes for the job. The way that a team combines their vast array of abilities is the key to victory, requiring high levels of team play, coordination, cooperation, and problem solving. 
So that's a little bit on the fancy copywriting side of things. But to break that down a little bit, I want to show this. This is a screenshot I just took recently in Overwatch of the hero selection. So we've got 40 heroes in here. And we've got three main roles. And this is what kind of factors into it being a really great opportunity to learn such things as team play and coordination. This is something that some of my friends and I who started that team, we had a lot of experience playing sports, but some of my friends on that team didn't. And for them, we found it was a really important opportunity for them to learn what it means to compete with a team and coordinate with them at a high level and yeah, manage that pressure that comes with that and stay involved with the team and communicating and, and playing heroes, not just that, oh, I want to play this one because I like them, but oh, what five heroes can we play across these three roles to give us the best chance to win and to cooperate together as a team? And so that's something really exciting about Overwatch. And this hero roster is super fun. So you've got three main roles here. You've got support, which is a bit like a defender. They're in the back and they are healing the team and trying to keep everyone alive in the fight, keep the opponents from scoring a bunch of points. You've got the damage characters who are a little bit like your strikers in soccer or your forwards in hockey, something like that. They are the flashy ones doing a lot of the uh, scoring of points and different things in Overwatch. And then you've got the tanks who are leading the way forward. They are maybe shielding their team or protecting them by charging forward and creating space for them to move up safely and that kind of stuff. So kind of your big uh, leading the charge, a little bit like an offensive lineman going forward and clearing space, if you know a football analogy a little bit there. But uh, yeah, you've got these three roles and you're only going to be playing five of these 40 heroes at once. And so it's always a matter of your team choosing heroes that are complementary to each other to try and make everyone's strengths work together to give your team the best chance to win. So it's a really cool opportunity to teach the students about what it means to not just be playing games and trying to be good at them, but to be trying to be trying to be good at connecting with your team and cooperating with them and finding a strategy and a way forward that is adaptable and is making everyone's strength shine through and giving you the best chance possible to win. So that's what makes Overwatch really fun for me as someone with a sports background and what makes me really excited about teaching it to gamers who, for some of them, it's their first opportunity to be on a team. And that's a big thing for us. And so we're going to be forming teams at the beginning of camp and um, leading them through all week with their same team and then run a bit of a tournament on the Friday and hopefully give them an opportunity to really feel like a part of the team and really get some competitive experience uh, learning about professional gaming, but also what it means to be a team and to compete together. So the next section, I want to touch on a kind of a content review of Overwatch. This actually is one of the major motivations for why I'm making this video. I've had conversations with a number of potential students and actually even with parents and all kinds of things um, about, you know, should we be concerned about what's in this video game? And I get it. It, it comes from a direction of a lot of games kind of get lumped together, and it's sort of the thing where a few games that people hear about all the time are things like Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty and all the violence um, included in that. And so I want to touch on, A, I think everyone will understand this, but something generally to keep in mind whenever you're looking at a video game with for your kid is just that, you know, Disney's Frozen and, say, Saving Private Ryan are very different, right? Every movie can be very different. So just because you might not want your 11-year-old to watch Saving Private Ryan does not mean that movies are bad. And I know you know this, and if we're talking about this, if you're watching this video, it's because your kid is already interested in video games. But it's worth noting, too, in genres, just because Overwatch can be classified as a shooting game doesn't mean that it's Call of Duty. It doesn't mean that it's AK-47s and explosions. A lot of games are not like that. So to move into this a little bit, we've got Bob from our friend at uh, Plugged In Gaming Review or Game Reviews. If you don't know Plugged In, it's a really great Christian resource that uh, my parents certainly used a lot. My mom especially used a lot for deciding what movies and games me and my brother and my siblings were going to be able to interact with while we were growing up. So Bob Hoos from Plugged In Game Reviews has described Overwatch as having a cartoony, blood-free violence, saying that the cartoony play is mess-free and feels more friendly to young gamers than other trigger pullers. And I enjoyed actually, I was reading now, doing some research, a recent article of his uh, about a game that's inspired by Overwatch, Star Wars Hunters. Uh, the gameplay is inspired by Overwatch. And so he describes the whole, on the whole genre of Overwatch inspired games as being relatively mess free with no blood or flesh rending, just zaps of light and color. So next I'm going to play a video and fair warning, it's going to move pretty quick. We'll pro probably play it twice. But um, just to show that 
Overwatch is, again, very cartoonish and kind of fun and kind of silly, actually, in the violence that is included in Overwatch. It is um, the hero that I play, Lucio. He skates around on the walls, and he has what's going to look essentially like a megaphone, and he uses these green s sound waves to knock opponents around and do different things with that. And so you're going to see right away here, it's a brightly colored recreation of the city of Venice in Italy, and it is not the kind of dark and bloody Call of Duty clips that you might have seen in 2010. It's very fun. It's very brightly colored. It is blood-free, and it is very unique and interactive and varietal. So you're going to see a lot of that in this next clip, and I'll play it, break it down, and then probably play it again. It up, Never fear, I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Never fear, I've arrived. So, you've got obviously me getting very excited there, but to break down a little bit of what's going on, I am a support hero, I'm coming up from the back line as kind of a defender and a healer, my tank is in a lot of trouble, and so I'm coming up to try and protect him to do so. I'm gonna use what you see now in the still a gold and blue megaphone, essentially, and it's gonna create an exciting shade of green and a sound wave. And not three of my five opponents off the map into the right here and water to vent this in all of their <laughs> And so this is a really fun clip for all of us, but it's also never fear, I've arrived. Goes to show kind of what it looks like on a general basis. It's got the cartoony, kind of Venice looking, well, it is I've Venice, arrived. it's meant to be Venice, but kind of Venice looking neighborhood, and you're knocking someone back into the water using a megaphone. And arrived. when I tank in front of me, I think I'm just going to a big hammer, which is supposed to kind of represent um, the style of fear I've arrived. here in Oakland. Never fear, I've arrived. <laughs> It's hopefully able to see a little more in clarity what's going on there, having heard a little bit about it, but yeah, this is me with my megaphone and my tank there with this cartoonishly big hammer, and again, just to kind of show that obviously Overwatch has a cartoony style of violence that is more akin to an episode of the Looney Tunes than to, say, a game of The next and kind of final thing I want to touch on for, like, the content review segment of this is just the idea that is... Um, present with video games sometimes, as I've done a lot of study of video games as a literary source, actually, for my work in uh, my journalism degree that I'm doing, and in reading mostly older papers, I think this has probably died down a bit, but in reading older papers about arcade games and different things, there is sometimes a concern that video games kind of indulge the male fantasy by having a bunch of very slender and scantily clad women on the screen at all times. And so I wanted to direct us back to this hero selection screenshot that I had from a while back, just to demonstrate that there is 40 characters in this game, and they are meant to represent a huge variety from all across the world. So we've got my hero Lucio there on the right side with his green, and he is a Brazilian DJ in the lore of the game. So all these characters have these backstories and connections to each other. Ana in the support line is the mother of Farah in the damage line, and there's all this, these kind of things that you can read up on and cinematics and little shorts and things you can watch to see stories of all these different characters and so they're from all over the place we've got baptiste from haiti and lifeweaver from thailand and then over on the bottom left side of the screen you're going to see wrecking ball who is actually a hamster and is in a giant metal ball and he swings around and knocks opponents away and does all kinds of different things and just goes to demonstrate that there is a massive variety of heroes in overwatch and they are not all one thing and none of them are meant to kind of elicit any sort of response they are all just here to represent different people in different walks of life and to create a really fun and varietal selection of characters from which you can create these teams of five to compete in the game. So I just want to touch on that and show some of the variety and some of the silliness of a hero like Wrecking Ball or a couple of the robot characters like Bastion kind of towards the middle with his little hats and all these different things and just kind of speak to, yeah, the nature of the characters in the game. With that, I do just want to go back to the camp briefly to close the video here, just say that yeah, this is July 15th, so coming right up, and is gonna be running 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., which is a time frame that we've heard a little bit of feedback on, and so I'm not sure I'm gonna be talking to Jordan again, and we're gonna try and come up with something to make the drop off and pick up times for that a little bit more manageable for working families, but uh, stay tuned for that. There's gonna be some more news there. And to register, you can visit the website, which I didn't list here actually, and I should have, but that's uh, Red Eye Gaming Lounge, .ca, I think, but also just you can look up Red Eye Gaming and Abitur and you'll find it. 
or you can visit in the store. It's just down on Gladys up by downtown if you know where that's at, or you can give a call to that number there on the screen at the moment. And then the registration for that does include a custom jersey. I'm not exactly sure, so I'll talk to Jordan what his plan for getting the names and numbers and then getting those delivered in a reasonable time frame is. So I'm going to talk to him about that. But that's something maybe you can ask him too if you end up talking to him, if you come into Red Eye or give him a call. But uh, the price point for that right now is admittedly a little higher than I expected. Now, it includes a jersey, which is part of Jordan's explanation of it and a couple of things. But I have to say, when I saw that as someone who's involved in this and coaching at it, I was a little surprised. And I think it's something that would have made it a little more difficult for my family when I was younger trying to consider enrolling me in this. And so I do want to express, first of all, my sympathy for that, but also that I'm aware of that and I can't do a ton to alleviate that. But we are going to try and do something thing as Kelowna Gas Esports to make this hopefully a little bit more manageable for our connections. And so uh, if your student is associated with Kelowna Gas Esports, which if they're watching this, they are. Okay, so anybody who I'm sending this along to, anyone who's connected with me or Kelowna Gas or you have esports uh, students that I've led in the past, whatever, I run Kelowna Gas Esports alongside a couple of my friends and partners. And so we are going to be offering to subsidize that by taking $50 off the fee or reimbursing that ourselves. So it's going to be $199.99 instead of the $249.99 if you're connected with Kelowna Gas Esports, which again, if you're watching, congratulations, you are. Um, but I know that isn't the most life-changing amount of money, but I just wanted to do something to express that we at Kelowna Gas um, understand that this can be an expensive world to get involved in, as is registering your kid you know, in a sport or any kind of thing like this. But we just want to be cognizant of that and try and make this as accessible for everyone as possible, again, so we can build an ecosystem where students can take their gaming to the next level and be involved in the team and, yeah, take pride in what they're doing in that way. And we can teach them some really exciting things, hopefully, come July. So thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to hopefully seeing your student in July for Overwatch Esports Camp at Red Eye Gaming. Thanks so much.